So this will be Camilla Parker Bowles. I thought that'd be interesting from birth till now. Let's see how it goes and how they got together. Listen, if you like the video, I hope you do like it, and I hope you will subscribe, and thank you very, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. feel like we know Camilla, uh, but you know, I don't think you know her this well. So this is all wiki stuff, and I got some interesting pictures because there's pictures everywhere of everybody in that family. So here we go, Camilla Parker Bowles. Shand, Camilla Shand. This is pretty interesting. I thought I had known, read, done, filmed, talked about everything about all the royals that there was to talk about, and then I thought, but I don't really know deep about Camilla. So here's we go. So uh, 1947, Camilla Rosemary Shand was born on July 17th, so she's a cancer. Now, she was born at King's Hosp uh, College Hospital, London, and baptized at Furl Church, East Sussex. And she was raised at the Lanes, which is an 18th century uh, country house in Plumpton, Plumpton, East Sussex, in a three-story house in South Kensington. Uh, that's her family's uh, second home. And um, she was educated in England, Switzerland, and France. So uh, her father was a British Army officer uh, turned businessman after retiring from the arm or retiring from the army and her mom was the daughter of the third baron ashcombe uh, she has a younger sister and brother and her maternal great-grandmother alice keppel do you know that name alice keppel was a mistress of king edward the seventh for 12 years seventh for 12 years so it runs in the family uh, the Shans were gentry and opened their garden for a summer fate. Is that what those, those are calls, called? And uh, she had a, a those little party, summer parties. And she had a tomboy uh, sort of childhood. And uh, in 1953, at the age of five, Camilla was sent to a co-educational school in Ditchling Village. That must have been something in 1973, co-educational. In the 1960s, Camilla met her first husband, a guards officer and lieutenant in the Blues and Royals, uh, through his younger brother, who worked for her father's wine firm in uh, Mayfair. Now, in 1983, she's 10 years old, and she attends school in Queensgate, South Kensington. Uh, 1964, Camilla left Queensgate with uh, O-level and not staying long enough for A-levels. And at age 16, she went to finishing school in uh, Switzerland. In uh, 1965, she decided to study French and French literature at the University of London Institute in Paris and uh, was one of 311 London debutant debutantes uh, that year. So she year. So she shared a small flat in Kensington with a friend and then moved to a larger one in Belgravia with the daughter of the Duke of Abercorn and worked as a secretary for a few West End firms and then as a receptionist in Mayfair and then later shared the flat with the daughter of the sixth Baron of Carrington who later became a special aide to Camilla. This woman became a special aide to Camilla and Prince Charles. Uh, she was a passionate horse rider frequently attending equestrian events and had a passion for painting. Now in 1970, that's the relationship with Parker Bowles, uh, but it, it had started and then ended. And now she was courting Char he rather he Parker Bowles was courting Charles's sister at the time, uh, Prin Princess Anne. So in 1971, Camilla and uh, Prince Charles met formally at the home of at the home of a mutual friend, not a polo match, and uh, they began seeing one another at polo matches in Great Windsor Park, in Windsor Great Park, I should say. Now, in 1973, the relationship, Charles and Camilla, you know, they're young, was put on hold because Charles went off with the Royal Navy. Uh, everything ended abruptly. Now, some 30 years later, someone wrote that the great uncle of Charles, Lord uh, Mountbatten, had sent Charles uh, overseas to end uh, the relationship, making way for his own granddaughter, uh, they think. Then others said that maybe the Queen Mother at the time, uh, the current Queen's mom, the Queen Mother uh, didn't approve and wanted Charles to marry a Spencer granddaughter of her close friend. And then someone else thought that Charles had met Camilla just too early, uh, not asking her to wait while he went away. And then royal biographers just think, that regardless of anything, if they had tried for marriage approval at that time, it would have been declined. Palace courtiers found her unsuitable. 
so supposedly. So after years of a Parker Bowles on and off relationship, she married the British uh, Army officer. British uh, Army officer. Uh, he's, his name is fully uh, Andrew Parker Bowles. They have two children. Now, the engagement was in the Times. They married in a Ro Roman Catholic ceremony at the Guards Chapel uh, Wellington Barracks in London. And she was 25 and he was 33. So a society wedding, uh, it was the wedding of the year with 800 guests. And uh, the royals included uh, Princess Anne, the Queen Mother, and Princess Margaret. I guess Charles was overseas, perhaps. I don't know. And uh, they bought uh, this manor, Bullhide Manor, in Allington, Wiltshire, and later uh, Middlewick uh, House, uh, Middlewick House in Cors Corsham. So confusing. So confusing. So in 1979, Charles's great uncle and mentor, Lord Mountbatten, was assassinated. His boat was blown up while he was on holiday. Crazy. And then Charles was grief stricken and he relied on Camilla, apparently. Rumors began about a rekindled intimate relationship, and some say her husband even approved because he had numerous lovers. So, um, 1981, though, Charles marries Lady Diana Spencer, as we all know. And then 1982, the affair with Camilla became public, and the book with because of the book Diana, her true story. And then 1999, tabloids published the filthy transcripts of the Camilla Gate tape, an intimate phone conversation between Camilla and Charles, damaging his public image and vilifying her. Apparently, he was heard saying that he wished he was um, a tampon and could be uh, with her all the time all the time. So, in 1994, in a TV interview, Charles and Mrs. Parker Bowles, uh, wait, 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 Charles said, okay, in, 1980, in 1994, in a TV interview, Charles says this, Mrs. Parker Bowles is a great friend for a very long time, and I will, and will continue to be for a very long time. The relationship had kindled after his marriage with Diana had irretrievably broken down some eight years earlier in 1986, according to him. And then uh, both couples, uh, the Camilla and Charles, and their respective husbands and wives, uh, divorced. So, and then also, sadly, Camilla's mother died from osteoporosis. So Charles declared that Camilla is non-negotiable. And you, know, you think about that. Her mother died right as this is rekindling back up. It's almost like fate stepped in and threw them into each other's uh, way again. So 1995, Charles employs a public relations firm for their uh, public images, and uh, she became his unofficial uh, companion. And then in 1999... They made together their first appearance at the Ritz Hotel in London at a birthday party for this Greek uh, king, uh, which seemed like the Queen's seal of approval. And about 200 photographers and reporters from around the world were there. Now, in 2000, she accompanied Charles to Scotland for official engagements and became president of the National Osteoporosis Society in, uh, that kind of introduced her uh, to the public sort of officially. And then in 2002, the Queen actually invited her to the Golden Jubilee in the royal box behind the Queen at Buckingham Palace. Uh, Camilla maintained her house near uh, Laycock in Wiltshire, I guess, is that, that's all pronounced, but moved into Clarence House, which of course is Charles's household and official uh, residence. Then in, 2000, then in 2002, Camilla accompanied Charles in all official events and even the annual Highland Games in Scotland. The media speculated that engagement announcement was on the way and polls showed uh, support for, for marriage. 2005, Clarence House announces the engagement. Charles gave her a, a diamond ring of his grandmother, uh, the Queen Mother, um, which she had received, the Queen Mother had received for birthing Queen Elizabeth II. Of course, she wasn't birthed as Queen Elizabeth II. She was just Elizabeth and never expected to be queen at that time. Right? Right. So they had a civil marriage at uh, Windsor Guildhall, uh, Charles and Camilla. Charles and Camilla. And a blessing at St. George's Chapel, uh, Windsor Castle. Um, Charles should never, sh okay, here's, here's what I think. Charles should have married Camilla when he first had the chance. They were ideally suited, we know now, but it wouldn't have been possible then, so they were made friends. And then Camilla uh, now has been styled as the wife of a royal peer, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cornwall. And if Charles becomes king, she would legally, automatically be a uh, queen consort. So that's who we've got here um, in Camilla. God, this is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbillo on um, the um, the classic uh, Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person, Wise, has had their input into it. And uh, th what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like, what I think of when I open these containers is, if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box, I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, 
I'll go over. But I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks. It's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific uh, synopsis of uh, how uh, uh, this uh, uh, Rider weight uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about uh, author weight and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic uh, theory and history of all of that. Um, it, is, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the cards. So I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering, it's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back, they're kind of shiny, and um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close-up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems, and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color, and I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in a typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at when, before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, and there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle. or, or And then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them. So this will be all about Camilla. And I'm really not sure what I want to ask as usual. Um, I kind of want to ask, wasn't she always the one? But I mean, it's obvious because now they're married. Um, so I'm not going to waste time with that. But um, I guess I could ask if she will uh, uh, be queen. I don't think she will. But I'll ask, will Camilla be queen? I think she'll be queen, uh, king consort. King's consort. Is she called the queen consort or king's consort? I just said it. But um, I think that's how she'll be known. I don't think she'll be styled as the queen. Um, so we'll ask that and then we'll ask, oh, it'll be interesting is I'm sure that Charles will go first and then what will she be? Will she be the queen? She won't be the queen mother. I don't think she'll have something official. So that's interesting. Um, will she, she will be treated with respect after he's gone. That's definitely. Um, well, let's ask who will go first, Charles or Camilla? So, uh, will she be queen, which I don't think she will, but I'll ask the cards. And then um, who will go first? The two of them. Of the two of them. Is that good enough? And maybe, maybe if I think about it, how will she be remembered well in history? So those are pretty. Uh, those are questions that I think the cards can answer. So will she be queen? Uh, will she be queen? Will she be queen? Huh. I don't think so. These cards don't want to. Kind of don't want to work on it. Will Camilla be queen? I think what I'll do is a full Celtic cross, and then if I need to, another dyadic cross after that. So will Camilla be queen? I don't think so, because these cards don't even want to work on this issue. So we'll spread them out right now. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, got that. So this will be the first part of a Celtic cross, a full Celtic cross, will Camilla be queen is the question for the first part of this Celtic cross. And the signifier for that is, so a page of pentacles, and I think what this means is, you know, pentacles are value, and page is just the weakest of the court cards, and I think she just doesn't have enough value to be queen, and there's lots of reasons why. I mean, she's going to come into a very short reign, and they're not going to have children together to promote, and everything's already in place for uh, when uh, Charles goes, so there's not much need for her to be queen, but I don't think so. She brings very little value to the game. But the challenge to that is, ah, being this is being offered something that you don't want. So that I think, in fact, in fact, that would be something that she doesn't want. Um, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, the base of this reading, then, for Will Camilla be queen, is the king of swords. So, and it looks like this is going to be uh, certainly Char Charles's um, uh, decision. And uh, he will stick to uh, the rules. 
I believe. The path to this reading as to whether Camilla will be queen is no. No, she, this is in battle. The Nine of Wands is just super. Uh, all the plans that she's been through, she's finally come through it. She's standing tall. She's a little beat up. She's starting to look good now. I mean, her reputation is good now, but she really went through it. So uh, that was the past. And then the sky of this reading as to whether Camilla will be queen is um, it, there could be still some decision about that, I guess, because Charles, after all, is the king. But, you know, you got to think that uh, uh, the government would step in, the prime minister or someone would step in and say, you know, you know, you, 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 the monarchy's on uh, threadbare as it is. So, and then the um, likely outcome for all of this first part here, this full diet at cross, uh, will be uh, will Camilla be queen? Is well, it's wishing things were the way they were. And uh, at another time, you know, if you think back and if they had done this from the beginning, if they had courted properly, if they had fought uh, uh, society and just gone for what was right at the time, maybe. But she's ending up in the position almost of queen. Uh, really, uh, the most uh, beautiful way possible, she or because her responsibilities are less uh, stringent. So that's great. So she's. I don't think she's going to be queen. And then the second part of this, I want to uh, ask. Uh, okay, yeah, I want to. You know what? That's going to be the end of this because I think the next one will be uh, full Celtic cross for um, for who's going to go first. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. So I'm going to take these six cards and get them back inside. One, two. Three, four, five, and then six. Yeah. So who will 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 Charles go first? Will Charles go first, and then I'll have a follow up question for the end of that full uh, Celtic cross. Will Charles go first? Will Charles go first? Let's divide these in half. As a matter of fact, will Charles go first? Interesting. So let's have six cards. This will be one, two. Will Charles go first? Which one of them is Charles going to go first? And uh, let's see what the cards tell us about that. Okay. Get these all set up and nice to use. And we'll let's see what this is signified for Will Charles uh, go before Camilla? Oh my gosh. Look at that. I mean, that's pretty definite. I'm not going to, uh, you know, there you go. But what's the challenge to that? Uh, the question, will Charles go first? The challenge to that is the fact, of course, that he's the king. <laughs> wow. I wonder if this can mean that he ends up stabbing himself. That's very interesting. The base of this reading, then, is uh, the emperor. Wow. It's all about uh, Charles. It's all about Charles. Yeah. And then the past of this reading uh, is going to be the knight of pentacles so how can the so she has now risen in stature uh, to a knight so this is uh, she's not a page anymore but she's she's gained some stature here but she's still not a queen she's a knight and the sky of this reading is and that is a great big uh, offer of value just that position for her in life imagine for and for anyone uh, who finds himself like that that's quite an amazing thing to be married to the king wow and then the likely outcome of this first part of this uh, will charles go charles go first yeah and uh, you know, it's it's a there will be a fair distribution of of taking care of her. She will live in the style of a uh, of a of a uh, the widow of a queen of a king. Yeah, that's beautiful. Will Camilla uh, have a favorable uh, place in history? Will Camilla be considered favorably in the long term in history? Will Camilla be considered favorably? in the long term in history. Just in four cards, will Camilla be considered favorably in the long term in history? The self of that question then, oh, okay. So it's a, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's interesting. So, and uh, what's that uh, in the environment of then? If Camilla will be, uh, it could be a surprise. A, a compassionate a surprise could come up uh, in that. But, you know, that's a very weak a very weak uh, situation with this page of cups. Uh, and then the hopes and the fears of all of that is, of course, that everything ends up happy family, that the children, that are the grandchildren of, of Charles, and, and, of course, her children, that everything just is resolved happily in the end. And the likely outcome of the whole thing is, oh, that's interesting. So we're back to being made an offer that she maybe this maybe this sort of adulation this way is not something she ever wanted 
That's what I've got to say. I'll be generous and say that. Yeah. The sort of adulation that she'll be uh, privileged to isn't exactly now how she uh, would have had this work out. You know, we change as our life uh, goes on. So that's very interesting. Well, I don't know about you, but that was a fun exercise for me. So uh, so for the last part of this, I'll just talk about because I have it in front of me here. Well, the question was, um, will Charles go first? And the signifier of that is pretty self-explanatory without being graphic. Well, without it being pretty graphic instead of getting the death card. But yeah, that's it. And it's challenged by the fact, of course, that he is the king. Okay. And then the, um, and the, the base of that whole thing, again, was the monarchy. Okay. The monarchy is uh, what's important. And in the past, we show her showing up now as a knight. She's, she's risen in value from a page, but now she's a knight. Okay. And then the, uh, in the sky of that reading is this great big offer of value, which means that she will be very well taken care of for the rest of her life. And, uh, and that uh, comes back to here uh, with the outcome of that first part of distribution of wealth. Okay. So, and then uh, we uh, then... Uh, wanted to know how it should be thought of in history. And it'll be a crapshoot. Uh, it'll be, uh, some will think well, some won't. It'll go back and it'll go forth, just like so many things in history. Think of uh, all the queens and all the kings and how they're favored or not favored or thought about in one article one way and another article another way. And then uh, that's in the in the environment of, of course, a, a big surprise. So it could be uh, this big surprise uh, come out to, uh, uh, to shape her image, or it could be the big surprise that the fact that she is even there in that position to begin with after all this. And then the hopes and the fears of the whole thing was happy uh, family of the Ten of Cups, uh, uh, called the Greedy Merchant, but I mean, it's really uh, complete uh, emotional value. And uh, in the, um, the sky for that reading is uh, back to being offered something that she never wanted. Now, maybe there might've been a time when she would've wanted it, but I think in the end, uh, I think she's happy with, and will be happy with how things end up. I hope we'll see. What do you think? What do you think about all this? I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.